the Gospel of Luke, chapter 1. Luke, a medical doctor who writes the Gospel of Luke and writes the book of Acts, a counterpart and spoken of about Paul. For as much as many have taken in hand to set forth in order and decoration of those things which are most surely believed among us, as many have taken in, many people try to write this. How many is many? I don't know. But we know of four. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And we mark Luke as the Christ, the Son of Man. And we'll see his genealogy of man come in a few chapters. So what Luke is writing is what we believe. That's what he says. Even as they delivered them unto us, which from the beginning were eyewitnesses, so this ain't somebody, oh, men wrote the Bible. Yeah, men wrote the Bible, but guess what? They're witnesses. No one from North America wrote. They had no idea. Well, they had no idea there was an Israel. They had no idea there was a Middle East. And ministers of the word. Eyewitnesses and ministers. It seemed good to me also having had perfect understanding that don't mean perfect it means all to his will all of his his might all things that were very first very first of what we're going to write of what john the baptist he speaks about and jesus christ so somewhere luke has been around the, the story of jesus he's a witness it seemed good to me having had perfect understanding of the things which the very first to write unto thee in order. Underline that if you're a Bible mark. Luke says in order. From birth to resurrection. So most. Huh? So maybe he was there and not alone when he was born. He's a medical doctor. I, I can't assume. I don't know. But they say Luke is also the only Gentile. I don't know. The Holy Spirit had to give him insight to write. And Luke has a Greek flavor. I'm surprised Peter would get I'll be dead. We don't really see Peter. This is the story of Peter. Most excellent Theophilus. That's a Greek. This is the same man that the book of Acts is written to. So Luke writes to one man two books. The story of Jesus Christ from the start to the beginning and the story of the church, the apostles from their beginning. Jesus ascended to the right hand of the Father to the end. Their death. Why did he write? That thou mayest know the certainly, certainly of those things wherein thou hast been instructed. So Theophilus Theophilus, I don't want you guys to say his name twice in the Bible, <clears throat> had an understanding of Jesus Christ, and Luke writes to make it more. Beginning. There was in the days of Herod, Roman government, the king of Judah, a certain priest named Zacharias, I can never remember his name, of the chorus of Abba, and place you can find that and these courses are different <coughs> oh, that was, uh... well I'm we're just gonna go on this is so much uh, you can tell what seasons what seasons these priests you can date this course on what time of the year it was and his wife of the daughters of Aaron and her name was Elizabeth he's of Levi and forgive me because I'm having a hard time with my throat. And they were both righteous before God, husband and wife, walking in all the commandments and ordinances of the Lord, blameless, like the rich young ruler. They were sinners. The rich young ruler, he had problems coveting. And they had no child because Elizabeth was barren. Mark that in the Bible. Satan's trying to stop the messenger prophesied 
of Isaiah. If Satan could stop John from being born, Jesus wouldn't have been born. Jesus couldn't start his ministry. Because the Bible says a voice had to go before him. It would have done no good for Jesus to be born and grow without John, according to the scriptures. And they were both now well stricken in years, like Abraham and Sarah. And it came to pass that while he executed, done, accomplished the priest's office before God, he is standing, we will see, in the holy place before the veil. He can't go in. In order of his course, and that's a, a Abba, Abba. According to the custom of the priest's office, his lot was to burn incense when he went into the temple of the Lord. So he's right there at the veil. He just can't go beyond the veil. And when you read Hebrews, it sounds like that altar was kind of in the veil, but outside the veil. And there appeared unto him an angel of the Lord standing on the right side of the altar of incense. And when Zacharias saw him, he was troubled and fear fell upon him. No one else is supposed to be inside this temple but priest. And you better be the right priest at the right time. That's why we see the course of Abel. No one could just walk into the holy place and say, Hi, how you doing? Uh, one of the kings, Uzziah, did that. And went to the same place as Zacharias is and offered. And he started getting leprosy. Aaron's sons went in with strange fire and they were dead. So here is somebody in the temple where they're not supposed to be. And that would bring fear. But the angel said unto... Especially since you skipped on the time that um, the whole multitude of people were praying right outside. Yeah. There. So there were a lot of people there at the temple. Just this guy was worried. Yep. Oh, my throat. But the angel said unto him, Fear not, Zacharias, for thy prayer is heard. So Zacharias, is, we're going to find out the prayer is the child. For a child. He's been praying for a child. And thy wife Elizabeth shall bear thee a son. How's that for prophecy? It's either a son or daughter. You're going to nail it down. A male. And thou shalt call his name John. Now, that's a prophecy when we get to the child being born it was almost not John and mom changes it and thou shalt have joy and gladness and many shall rejoice at his birth and a lot of do for he shall be great in the sight of the Lord Jesus said above all the men that have been born of a woman there's been no greater and shall drink neither wine nor strong drink, and shall be filled with the Holy Ghost even from his mother's womb. Right, should I drink as a Christian? How's that for a good verse? I mean, it doesn't say you can't, but it advises, you know what? It'd be best. Paul writes, be ye uh, filled with the Spirit, not, in ex uh, not to be drunken. Oh, my throat. And many of the children of Israel shall he shall he turn to the Lord their God. So when he goes out preaching the wilderness and baptizing, he brings people to God. Can you name at least 11 of them? Because 11 of them, in order to be apostles, had to be baptized by John. Guess who else he would bring to the Lord long down the road? He would have to bring Paul. Because in order for Paul to be an apostle, he had to have been baptized at John's baptism. No way around it. A, an apostle had to see the risen Jesus. Well, look how Jesus did that with the Paul. On the road of Damascus. He's seen the earthly ministry of Jesus. So John the Baptist is bringing people to God. And many of the children of Israel, Israel, Jewish, shall he turn to the Lord their God. And he shall go before him in the spirit and power of Isaiah. And we've learned about that through the gospel. To turn the hearts of the fathers to the children. And the disobedient to the wisdom 
of the just to make ready a people prepared for the Lord. Now remember, Luke wasn't here. How's he? How's he know all this? See verse fifteen, the Holy Ghost. Luke, sit down. I'm going to tell you what happened where you have no idea what. Remember, Luke is a Gentile. He's not going to be at that temple. He's definitely not going to be in a holy place, yet he records what happened in that place. I wonder if Luke used the Holy Spirit and went to go talk to Zacharias. Or talk to John. Or talk to John. He shall go before from the power of Elias. Jesus said, one time the disciples asked him, and Jesus said, truly, Elias has already come, but they've done whatsoever they wanted. And Zechariah said unto the angel, Whereby shall I know this? For I am an old man, and my wife well stricken in years. He doubts. He didn't do like Abraham. He didn't count it for righteousness. The faith in God. I mean, later on, Abraham laughed. But, you know, the first thing, okay, God, you said it. I believe it. And the angel answered and said unto him, I am Gabriel. Ooh, one of the name angels. And stand in the presence of God. Special angel. And am sent to speak unto thee and to show thee these glad tidings. This gospel. That's what gospel means, glad tidings. What, what's a gospel in the Bible? Uh, you're going to have a son, his name's going to be John. And he's going to turn people to God. That's a good news. He's going to prepare the, the, the nation of Israel for Jesus. That's good news. That's not the good news I preach. Yet, yeah, but I had the same message as, as John did. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. Jesus is coming. I'm a voice. And behold, thou shalt be dumb, unable to speak, and not able to speak until the day that these things shall be performed. Because thou believest not my words, which shall be fulfilled in their season, nine months. But why is this angel so hard on Zacharias and not Mary later? Mary has something told to her that's impossible. Zacharias, you know, you're an old man. You're going to have a child, Abraham and Sarah. Again, you got to look where he is. He's in the holy place. This man, Gabriel, shows up. If he was just a man, he wouldn't be standing there much longer. He'd be dead by God. Or have leprosy or something. The fact is that these two men are in the holy place speaking. Shows that it's a holy messenger of God. And the people waited for Zacharias. And marveled that he tarried so long in the temple. So he's taking more time. And when he came out, he could not speak unto them. And they perceived that he had seen a vision in the temple. Not only did he see a vision, he saw the angel. And he didn't grab no feathers or anything to show him. For he beckoned unto them, remain speechless. He's trying to do sign language. And it came to pass that as soon as the days of his ministration were accomplished, he departed to his own house. So he had to stay in Jerusalem for a certain period of time. When he's done, he goes home. And after those days, his wife Elizabeth conceived. Well, you know what he went home to do? Because she conceived and hid herself five months, saying, Thus hath the Lord dwelt with me in the days wherein he looked upon me to take away my reproach among men. I don't know why she's so... Because if you go back to the Old Testament again, you're going back to Sarah. This fact that here is these two old couples who are barren, now having seed, now having a boy... Man, that should have sparked Israel. Something's going on here. It happened before. The last time this happened. Now, it doesn't tell us how old. Abraham and Sarah were, were 100 and, and 
she was 90 years old. I don't know how old uh, Elizabeth is, but the last time something like this happened recorded in the Bible, a nation was born. Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, the 12 tribes. When it's recorded in the Bible and it happens again, Jesus is about to be born. Jesus is not born yet. John the Baptist will be born first. And in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel sent from God. <clears throat> so this is six months after Elizabeth conceived. Unto a city in Galilee named Nazareth. And that's that place over in Matthew. Where they say, oh, he's a Nazarene. No. She lived in Nazareth. That's where they were raised, in Nazareth. Her and her children. Can I say that? To a virgin espoused to a man whose name was Joseph. Of the house of David. And the virgin's name was Mary. Now you run that back to Matthew. You know, the, the, the taxation that Joseph had to take her all the way down to Bethlehem for the taxes and Jesus would be born. Luke is making sure that you know that this is a Jewish, this is the kingly line. We're talking about Jesus Christ. Christ, the Son of Man. 100% God. All right. Now 100% man of David. We'll see that later in chapter 3. And the virgin's name was Mary. And the angel came in unto her. You wonder where? Zacharias was told he's in the temple. We don't. I would assume God choosing Mary. And I, I'm, I'm assuming. And with biblical women in the, in the Bible, where men show up, where angels show up, where God shows up, they're working. They're doing something. Rebecca was going to get water. Rachel was tending the sheep. Hail. Thou that art highly favored. The Lord is with thee. Now, blessed art thou among women. Check out Judges 5.24 about Jael. She's blessed above women. The Roman Catholic Church has put more of a title on Mary than did Jael. But she was a murderer. I mean, she killed an enemy captive. Can't have her. And when she saw him, she was troubled at his saying, not at his presence, like, oh, you got wings and stuff like that. She was troubled, wait a minute. Why are you greeting me in the Lord? You mean God thinks I'm blessed? I'm just a young lady. Who am I? She's respectful. She's humble. And cast her mind what manner of salutation this shall be. She's humble. As we read through the Gospels, we see this with Mary all the time. She's always pondering. Jesus will do or say something, and she ponders it in her heart. She's studying it out. She's wondering. She's seeking. And the angel said unto her, Fear not, Mary, for thou hast found favor with God. And behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb. And bring forth a son, either male or female, son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus. So Jesus is prophesied before he's born, and he's given a name before he's born. It says, shall conceive. He is given a name before he's conceived. And he shall be great, greater than great. And he shall be called the son of the highest. And the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father, David. There's that king of Matthew. Here's the man, God. He's going to be born of a womb. Matthew didn't say anything about the womb. He just said she gave birth, laid him in a manger, and the shepherds came. The throne of his father, David. Great, 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 great grandpa, David. And he shall rule over the house of Jacob forever. The twelve tribes. Not Ishmael. 
And of his kingdom shall be no end. King of kings, Lord of lords. Then said Mary unto the angel, How shall this be, seeing I know not a man? Now that's a proper question for a young lady. Well, wait a minute. How can I be pregnant? I have not been with a man. I am a virgin. That's a lot better than Zechariah's question in verse 18. That's a great sign for Zechariah. Here is an angel in the house of the Lord, in the holy place, speaking to you of God. Mary, we have no idea where she's standing with this angel talking to him. She's like, wait a minute. I can't be pregnant. I have not been with a man. I'm espoused to a man, but I haven't been with him. Now we have two people here. We have Elizabeth. A child to the childless and we have Mary a child to a virgin and look at the two men look at the two men that will be born of these women they changed the whole world and the angel answered and said unto her the Holy Ghost shall come upon thee and the power of the highest shall overshadow thee no sexual relations with gods how was jesus conceived in her womb power the power of god impregnated impregnated her god didn't come in onto her like other religions would would have their gods god spoke in that womb and there's jesus now watch this Therefore also that holy thing, calling Jesus in the womb a thing, but a holy thing, which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. And behold, thy cousin Elizabeth, she has also conceived a son in her old age. And this is the sixth month, so John is six months older than Jesus with her who was called barren man mary gets double good news i'm going to have a baby i'm going to have a miracle baby i'm going to have the messiah the one's been long waited probably all the girls want to have the messiah and not only that my cousin is pregnant also and mary has no idea that the, that her Her cousin's baby, I don't know what the relation is, she has no idea that that child that's going to be born of Elizabeth is going to prepare the way for her son. Mary has no idea what just happened in Luke chapter 1. In one chapter, in 36 verses, do you just realize the course of human history has now changed? The nation of Israel is going to get a witness. They're going to get a voice. That voice is going to prepare a way for a man named Jesus, who is God and who is man. And he's going to dwell among the people. God is going to dwell among the people. God is, Job said, does he have eyes like I have seen? Does he feel like I feel? God is now going to know what it is to be a man. He will weep. He will sigh. He will get angry. He will sleep. He will eat. He will be rebuked. He will be forgotten. He born of a womb. And it's kind of interesting that another fact is that Elizabeth and Mary are related. And Elizabeth, if you go back to verse 5, they're of the daughters of Aaron. Now, I don't understand family relations of cousins and stuff like that. Somewhere in Mary's line, there had to be the children of Levi. Her husband is of Judah 
born of Bethlehem, of David. You got Levi in there too for Elizabeth and Mary to be cousins. I don't, can't explain that. Maybe somebody else you, you know who can preach and teach the Bible, maybe they can explain that to you. But just showing you that relationship there. A miracle thing has just happened in Luke chapter 1. And for, uh, behold, thy cousin Elizabeth, she shall also conceive a son in her old age, and this is the sixth month with her, who was called barren. For with God nothing shall be impossible. Genesis eighteen fourteen, Psalms one fifteen three, Jeremiah thirty two seventeen, and Matthew three nine. God can do it. And Mary said, Behold, the handmaid of the Lord, be it unto me according to thy word. And the angel departed. Belief. She had the same belief that Abraham said, I'm going to have a child, old age. Okay, Lord. Now, this is a little bit hard. See, Abraham was a 90 year old bride with a womb for a womanhood completely dead. And that's what Paul says. I believe it's Romans. He says, as far as Sarah's womb, it was dead. And it was dead. Abraham said, Okay, you can give me a son. No problem. Mary. You're not going to have any sexual relations. And you will produce a child. Oh. And the Holy Ghost is going to do it? Yes. Okay. I believe you. So be it. Mary has the same faith that Abraham had. She's a... Re Listen, we put her down because of the Roman Catholic Church, but we don't give her enough credit. Give her the credit is when her son dies on that cross, she's there. When the when the three days and three nights are up, that Sunday morning, she's there at the tomb. Now, she's not expecting her son to rise. She's sitting there to, to finish the burial. But there she is. She's a remarkable woman. Let's give her credit on that part, that God chose her of all the Hebrew girls. And Mary arose in those days and went into the hill country with haste into a city of Judah. And entered into the house of Zacharias and saluted Elizabeth. So Zacharias lived in Judah somewhere. And it came to pass that when Elizabeth heard the salutation of Mary, the babe leaped in her womb and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Ghost. No tongues. No tongues being spoken. And the Holy Ghost came upon Elizabeth. So if you want to be a, a Pentecostal woman and have the Holy Ghost, you have, have John the Baptist in your womb. Meet Jesus. There's, there's another way you can get the Holy Ghost. You want to pervert the Gospels. The womb of Jesus met the womb of John the Baptist and you had a little revival meeting. And she spank out with a loud voice and said, Blessed art thou among women, not above women, among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb. And men's underwear is called the fruit of the womb. I don't know what that is all about. but And whence is this to me? That the mother of my Lord should come to me. So Mary told her. In that salutation, Mary told her what happened. I'm here because an angel came to me. Oh, yeah, that's something I heard with my husband. He hasn't been able to speak for a while, but he wrote it down the thing. That angel visited him, and look, I'm with the baby now. And whence is, whence is this to me that the mother of my Lord should come to me? For lo, as soon as the voice of thy salutation sounded in my ears, the babe leaped in my the babe leaped in my womb for joy. John was happy to see Jesus in the womb, and he didn't see Jesus. And he didn't hear Jesus. He heard Mary. John the Baptist in the womb of I was say Sarah. In the womb of Elizabeth knew that Jesus was coming. 
I have no idea how to explain that. And blessed is she that believeth, for there shall be performed a performance of those things which were told her from the Lord. She's going to give birth. She's going to be Jesus. He's going to save his people. When you take all the Gospels into account. And Mary said, now Mary's going to have a message here. Mary's going to prophesy here. My soul does magnify the Lord. Uh-oh. She don't magnify herself. That's why God chose her. She loved God. My spirit has rejoiced in God, my Savior, not her. Read that to a Catholic. For he has regarded the low estate of his handmaid. She's humble. <coughs> For behold, from henceforth all generations, look at this, shall call me blessed. What do the Catholics call her? Don't they call her the Blessed Virgin? Now how does she know that? Mary just prophesied what people were going to call her. Just in the wrong contents. For he, God, that is mighty, has done to me great things. I'm pregnant. I've never been with a man. And holy is his, his name. His mercy is on all them that fear him from generation to generation. That's a good message, Mary. He has shown strength with his arm. He has scattered the proud and imagination of their hearts. She ain't proud. That could be a second Advent reference she just spoken. He has put down the mighty from their seats and exalted of low degree. Job 5.11, that could be also second Advent. He has filled the hungry with good things and the rich he has sent away empty. Luke 16. That can also be second advent. He has hope and that's help, Old English. His servant Israel, in remembrance of his mercy, as he spanked to our fathers to Abraham and to his seed forever. That's a great message, Mary. You just preached about Israel, Jewish, what God's going to do, what your son's going to do. And Mary abode with her about three months and returned to her own house. Now Elizabeth's full time came that she should be delivered, and she brought forth a son. And her neighbors and her cousins heard how, remember how I said a whole bunch of people were going to be rejoicing at his birth? How the Lord had showed great mercy upon her, and they rejoiced with her. It came to pass that on the eighth day, they came to circumcise the child. They're within the law. And they called him Zacharias after the name of his father. Uh-oh. All right, we have a boy. But we, got, we don't have the right name. And his mother answered and said, Not so, but he shall be called John. Ooh. Ooh. Angel's right. And they said unto him, there is none of thy kindred that is called by this name. Where did you get John from? John? And they made signs to his father. So what's it called today? Sign language. Got to go by the King James Bible. One of the modern Bible says about that one. How he would have him called. Dad? Is it Zacharias or is it John? What? 62. Why would they have to make signs to the father? He was just dumb. He wasn't deaf. They could just talk to him. Maybe he was deaf too. Because you see sometimes in the Bible it's a deaf and dumb. Okay. They made signs. So they're doing something for him. <laughs> and he asked for a writing tablet and wrote. So he has to write down on paper saying 
His name is John. And they marveled all. Over a name. Jewish names have a purpose. And a lot of times a child was the eighth day was named here like John. Sometimes it was later. And you look at those names. They all have a meaning for something. Deborah means be. And you can just go with all the assumptions about why they named her B, and there are a lot of assumptions out there. And his mouth was open immediately, and his tongue loose, and he spake and praised God. He had nine months of silence. And when he opens his mouth after nine months, the last time he could speak when he was speaking to the angel in the holy place, nine months later, if not a little more time, because there was a little break and he had to stay in Jerusalem, do some work before he went home. When he opens his mouth, he praises God. How's that? And fear came all that dwelt round about them, and all these things were noise about throughout all the hill country of Judea. <laughs> you won't believe what happened over there at Zachariah's house. Man, they're going to name that boy John. You imagine that John. We we went to the father. He wrote down to us. He wrote John. I don't know why. That's, uh, and you won't believe. Right after that, he spoke. He couldn't speak before. And all they that heard them laid them up in their hearts, saying, What manner of child shall this be? And the hand of the Lord was upon him. So Zacharias was kind of a sign. This child is no ordinary child. But remember, Mary's forgotten. Guess who her child's going to be? Three months later, we're going to get the birth of the king. The messenger has been born. And his father Zacharias was filled with the Holy Ghost and prophesied. Here's another message in Luke chapter 1. We had a me message by the angel about a boy is being born. We have a message of Mary. Now we got a message of the priest, Zacharias. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel. Israel. For he has visited and redeemed his people. John 1, 13. He has raised up a horn of salvation for us in the house of his servant David. The horn is strength, power. It's still in Mary's womb. And he has spanked by the mouth of his holy prophets. Which has been since the world began. What's that verse there? Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures. Was buried. And arose again the third day according to the scriptures. And when you see the life of Jesus Christ in the gospel. It was, scriptures might be fulfilled. As his prophet wrote. Have you not read the scriptures? So Zacharias is saying as a priest to the people of Israel. Jesus Christ is going to fulfill our scripture. He's the one. That we should be saved from our enemies. Uh-oh. That's what they wanted Jesus to be. They wanted Jesus to come in and destroy the Roman government and set up and give them bread and fish for the rest of their life. They wanted a food kitchen. Jesus. Give us the message and then feed us. Um, and from the hand of all that hate us. That would be Revelation 20. When God casts all them into the lake of fire that... That's been against Israel. There will be no pure peace. 
of Israel unto the new earth. In the millennium, but Satan will be released after a thousand years, and he'll gather up an army, and God will with complete peace. It will also be the millennium of Jesus Christ. To perform the mercy promised to our fathers. Been a long time. And to remember his holy covenant. I will be with thy seed forever. Your seed will be as the stars, as the sands of the seeds. This is your land. Well, it's not their land right now. It's Rome's. And an oath which he swore to our father Abraham. So they knew what God said to Abraham. They were well into the word that he would grant unto us that we, we being delivered out of the hand of our enemies might serve him without fear. That's the millennium. And he's speaking about God. He's speaking about Jesus Christ. In holiness and righteousness before him all the days of our life. And you read that about the millennium. And thou, child, John, shall be called the prophet of the highest not the messiah john said he must increase i must decrease art thou him that come no i'm not him i'm just a face i'm just a voice i'm just a messenger for thou shalt go before the face of the lord to prepare his way now remember zacharias has been listening to mary and elizabeth for nine months and not being able to hear nothing or say nothing. He's heard who's in that womb of cousin Mary, I guess it would be. He knows what Mary's time is. He knows that she's three months. He knows six more months, guess who's coming? He knows that his son, Zacharias, knows the scripture. He's the Levite. They're in charge of scriptures. He's got Isaiah on his mind. It's time. Here he is. So even before Jesus Christ is born, a priest is preaching the Messiah has come. You tell me that the Pharisees, the Sadducees, and the scribes didn't hear that? You tell me that John, when he went to the temple and do it, you think he was quiet? You know who my boy is? Who's your boy, Zachariah? Hey, let me show you Isaiah. There he is right there. And guess who's going to come after him? Yeah, we know, the Messiah, blah, 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 blah. So when John shows up baptizing the people and all that, and all the commotion, guess who they send to John? They send people of the Pharisees, Sadducees, and the scribes. They're checking this thing out. The son of the highest, for thou, for thou shalt go before the face of the Lord to prepare his way. That's Isaiah. To give knowledge of salvation unto his people by the remissions of their sins. That's the message John preaches. Zacharias is a prelude of his son John preaching. And he's preaching to the hill valleys of Judea. Oh, they knew Jesus was coming. They knew Jesus was here. Zacharias told them. The priests told them. Though the tender mercy of God, of our God, whereby the day spring, that's the sun rising. Sun coming up. Day spring from on high has visited us. That's in Mary's womb right now. The sun of the morning. And for the Jew, they'll be looking for the sun coming up in the morning when it's dark, no light, no sun, no moon, no star, and that light comes from heaven. Coming to get the Jews who are run down the sail of Peter that need help desperately. The entire world is against them. That's why he says against their enemies. It ain't the Rome, the government, that God, Jesus is going to save them from. It's from the Antichrist. Though the tender mercy of God, whereby the day spring on, from on high has visited us, to give light to them that sit in darkness, John 3, and in the shadow of death, to guide our feet into the way of peace, Romans 10. 
Blessed are the feet that carry the gospel. And the child grew and waxed strong in spirit and was in the desert till the day of his showing unto Israel. So, there you go. Miraculous events going on right now. Nothing like it's ever happened and nothing like it will ever be. Jesus is not ever going to be born again. We need to be born again, but not Jesus.